Hi, Corey here. Welcome back to 3001. Today is our last lesson of the semester. We're going to talk about media in the marketplace and what type of media you should be looking for in your marketing plan. By the end of today's lesson, you will be able to realize the type of difference of each type of media and social media, thinking the differences of Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, the radio, the TV, etc. So one of the things you've been able to answer by now, because you've done so much thorough market research on your customers, where are they, when are they there, and how am I gonna reach them? Those are three questions that by this point in the semester, you should very easily be able to answer because you've done so much research. If you can't answer those three questions very easily, that means you are lacking in your research and you need to do more research to better understand your customer. So those are three questions you constantly have to be asking yourself when you graduate and you get a job in marketing or if you work in any kind of company, even if you're not in marketing, what type of situation are they in and how do, what is the answer to these three questions? I'm gonna put this up on the screen for you to see, but it's inbound marketing versus outbound marketing. So inbound marketing, what is that? Inbound marketing is when you prepare your web page, your SEO, SEO means you make a good web page so that has good ranking in Google, you have blogs, you have podcasts, you're putting out information. The idea is that you're pumping information so that when people find it, because they're trying to solve a problem, they come to your website, they find your information, and then they buy your products because they believe in you. And so you can understand how this is giving you an opportunity to be sort of an expert in the place. The one thing you are not doing though, you are not advertising. You're waiting for people to come. So the great thing is you're putting out information that's free information so that people see it because they have that specific problem, you know that they're going to buy. The downfall of this, you're waiting for people to come. It's sort of like fishing you're just throwing something out there and you're hoping someone catches it. Outbound marketing is the opposite. That's basically advertising. You're going out there and you're trying to catch people. You're not waiting for them, you're going for them. You're shooting for them. You're running advertisements, you're running promotions, you're cold calling, you're sending email blasts. The great thing about this, you don't have to wait. You're going, you're, you're not throwing a pole out there and waiting, you're throwing nets out there now and you're hoping that you catch some. It's a totally different mentality. The downfall of this, of course, is you're paying for it and the other problem is you're gonna get most people are not interested in your problem or don't have the problem that you're trying to solve. They're not interested in you and so the majority of the people will just move on and not actually bite on what you're selling. So it's a different mentality. One is hurry up and wait and one is just hurry up and rush all the time and hoping you can grab someone. From here until the end of the lesson, we're gonna talk about all vocab that will be on the test that you should definitely study. The first one's advertising. The most important thing you always have to remember about advertising, advertising is paid for, it's not free. You're paying someone to show your ad. You're paying the TV station, you're paying Facebook, you're paying Google, you're paying the newspaper, you're paying the radio, you're paying the TV, whatever it is, you're paying them money to show your ad. The second one is direct marketing. The difference between direct marketing and basic general advertisements is that direct marketing is customized. It's more like an email or more like the ads that follow you around the internet. It's very custom and it's focused on you. So if you can do it well and you have the technology and the resources to do this well, it can be very beneficial. The third ones are promotions. The purpose of a promotion is to give you a push. What's a promotion? A promotion is a coupon, a sales pitch. It's something that's pushing you, limited time. So think about it. Personally, I'm looking for a TV right now, or a big deal, or something at Target, I'll go out and buy it. It gives me the nudge. And that's what you have to always remember. Think about, it. it's lunchtime, what should we do? Well, you know what, I heard that McDonald's has a two for one, Big Macs, okay, let's go there. It's that type of thing. It gives you the nudge. That's the whole purpose of promotions. When you wanna drive movement, you use promotions. Personal selling. Personal selling is something like selling TVs, selling houses, selling cars, selling cell phones. It's something that's high learning, which we learned about before. It's high learning, it's often high involvement, and it's cognitive because people don't understand, so you need someone to help them. These are all vocabulary words that we've learned throughout the semester, and that's when you use personal selling. Public relations in today's world has become very gray because of social influencers. Originally when social influencers started, they were very, very big into public relations because most of them are pushing the brands for free. But then brands started paying them, whether it's through products or through actual money, and then became advertising. But unfortunately, the social influencers don't always share that they're being paid a lot of money sometimes to actually share these. Of course, there are still influencers that share the products for free. They genuinely buy them and they share them but 
it's hard to know the difference when it's us as consumers and we're searching through the internet. Event marketing and sponsors. This is when you're watching sports or you're watching some sort of musical or you're at a concert or you're any kind of event. You always see the signs around there where brands are showing themselves. They're paying to be there. That's event marketing and sponsorships. If you're watching the Olympics or you're watching sports on TV, you'll always see like the score and underneath the score, there's some sort of brand that's there. I remember a few years ago, I was pretty shocked that YouTube TV was there. I was pretty shocked a few years ago when I saw YouTube TV sponsoring the World Series. But I think they did it two years in a row. But it was underneath it said like the scores, the teams, and then below it said YouTube. That was kind of unique to me and a bit unexpected, I thought, at the time. And the last one's just social media. I'm not going to get into social media. You know what that is. So normally in the classroom, I go through and we do an activity where we show all the different channels you can advertise on and you're supposed to write out the customers. And that's why I sort of talked about in the beginning, you should be able to identify this. But I don't really think there's, there's not a great way to do this in the e-class, but I still want you to think about it. What I want you to remember is this. It wasn't long ago where you could spam the same ad across multiple channels, whether it's internet or not on the internet, and you would get the same results. That is not the case today. So I want you to take away from this is you have to understand where your customer is and who is on each channel and which channel your customer is on. What I mean by channel is Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Google, the newspaper, magazines, billboards, TV, Netflix, movies, sporting events, the radio, all of these are different. There are overlaps and you need to find out where your specific customer is so you don't waste money. And so you use the message that fits each individual channel. That's what you need to know. You need to know where your customer is and if you don't know that answer, you're not doing a good job of understanding who your customer is. You should easily be able to say our customer is at Twitter, the newspapers, and billboards. Done. And that's very simple because you've done the research so you know where they are and you know exactly what message to make that will connect with them. The last vocab word of the day, product placement. I love product placement. My favorite of all time product placement was in the original Transformers movie. I know this is dating me a bit now, but it doesn't matter, it was too good so I gotta share it. If you're, Here's a little bit of a history lesson. So around 1999, 2000, I think it was, Camaro, which is owned by GMC, was discontinued. They stopped making the car. You couldn't buy it anywhere, they just discontinued it. And then in 2007, when Transformers came out, Bumblebee, if you remember, he was a yellow Camaro. It was the first time anyone had seen the new Camaro and people were blown away. The best part is you still couldn't buy that Camaro. Chevy and GMC were paying a lot of money to Transformers to put that car in there. That's product placement. You're paying to have your product put inside of a movie or TV show. Bumblebee and the yellow Camaro crushed it when it finally came to the market compared to anything they ever expected. And that is amazing product placement. Product placement has exploded over the last 10 years. Why is it exploded? Because nobody watches TV anymore. And the second thing, when you do watch TV, what do you do? As soon as a commercial comes on, you grab your phone, you surf the phone. You don't pay attention to the commercials. That's why when you watch TV, you see nonsense medical ads nonstop because they know that only old people are watching TV. No young people are watching it anymore. It's completely gone. So what do brands do? They put product placements. They put their products inside of TV shows, movies, and video games. So anytime you see your brand or a brand inside of a TV show or movie, it's not an accident. They're paying a lot of money. That's why whenever they do car scenes, they always start out, always, on either the steering wheel or the front of the car. And then they zoom around to the person and that's product placement. So I want you to think about what you're watching TV shows or movies next time and you see any kind of brand, think about, oh, I got that. That's not an accident. They paid for that and they paid a lot of money for that. So I wanna say thank you so much for this great semester. I had a really, really good time. I hope you enjoy these videos. I put a ton of energy into making them and editing them and I did everything 100% myself uh, in my office. I got it all done. So I'm really proud of the way it worked out. I hope you learn marketing. If you ever have questions, always email me. You know, keep in touch, okay? Thank you so much, bye.